Welcome to a new episode of the Spirituality Channel. We are going to continue the series of chart readings. Uh, many thanks to our elder sister Liz for providing her birth details. And uh, it was a very uh, interesting chart. And the main point I want to talk about here is the conjunction of the Sun and the Venus. So it shows that in, the, in this person's life, the way the, the life was unfolding was not in harmony with the actual intention and, and need of fulfillment of the person. So it seems that the way the life was led has left some dissatisfaction because the things that are really wanted to be done and the real intention could not be perfectly served there. So what I mean with this and how this exactly plays out, we're going to see in the chart. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at the chart. So we have um, a Virgo Lagna here and Rahu is in the ascendant. Uh, <coughs> the sun is in the 12th house with Mars and Venus. Venus is retrograde. So uh, in the Rossi chart, that is um, the chart that gives, that gives us information about the body and the life part. And the first house is the very most important house in this chart. It, uh, it is like the, the whole chart is based on this house. So if this house, so this house gives a lot of information about how the life will go and how um, how the health will be and everything, many things. So since Rahu is there, and Rahu is always uh, uh, indicating of foreign things, of uncommon things, out of the box things, so definitely this person will have an uncommon life. Straight we can say, just from this uh, Rahu in the ascendant. <coughs> and The second thing I want to say is that the sun is in his own house, is in uh, Leo, together with Mars and Venus. So sun is the most important planet in the Rossi chart. So that, that chart is ruled, the, the Rossi chart, the f D1, is ruled by the sun. So the first house is already is indicating uncommon things, and then the lord of the... Um, of this ra of this chart, the sun is in his own house, which is very good. It's all in good dignity, so will give bring good results. <coughs> but it's in the twelfth house. So, <coughs> so Leo and the sun they are going together, and the sun is the king. So how we are establishing our kingdom, like our kshetra, where we becoming active, this is seen from the Leo and from the sun. So since it goes to the 12th house, um, the house of losses, of foreign things, it, we can see that this person along his life path didn't have like um a fixed place to stay or always a lot always moving always different opportunities coming up and going if let's say the sun or the leo would be something in the fourth house which is uh, about your home and your family and your mother and so that that would rather mean that this person would have have a very fixed more fixed life uh, s surrounding his uh, homeland and and family tradition but since it goes to the 12th house 
it means the the life part or the the life will be more established uh, will be a lot of change because loss means change will be there no so you cannot lose something is lost that means something new has to come because so therefore it's an unstable life and um, I know from from her from Liz thank you so much for listening and for providing your birth chart um, <coughs> that she said about herself that she was living like a gypsy most of the life and just going with the opportunities that are coming up so that can be seen that the sun is in the 12th house so always opportunities come they go and move on they come they go and move on mm-hmm. and uh, <coughs> if we see if we take this Bhava Padas, um, this Bhava Padas, this is a, uh, I've gotten from my teacher who does Prigu astrology. It's from the Prashna Rahasya. I believe it's not a bo- book that is publicly available because it is uh, only for the initiated ones or something like that. But <coughs> however, um, it's very powerful to use this. And if we see that the, s- the sun placement is in eight degrees of in the twelfth power in the twelfth house, and that shows losses and expenses, and we have to see also in how many in which pada from the lagna is. So lagna is in the third pada, so we have to combine these two meanings: losses, expenses, and parting and sadness. Since this is the placement of the sun, and this is the placement from the lagna to the sun, so these two things have to be combined. So the right shows that this person had always a lot of parting. I mean, has to say goodbye and it's, it is sad to say goodbye. And, but it also gives place for new things. So since uh, I would suggest in the son is in a good dignity in his own house, this parting and sadness didn't bring bad results it rather enriched the life to have many experiences and learn many things and just rather her life was enriched by being a gypsy and moving around so to say (coughs) Um, all right so Another one thing is that the, the sun is the final dispositor of this chart. So if you see like the moon is in the Mars house, Mars is in the sun house. The Mercury is in the moon house, the moon is in the Mars house, Mars is in the sun house. Saturn is in the Jupiter house, Jupiter is in the Mars house, Mars is in the sun house, Venus is in the sun house. So the final dispositor is the sun and the sun is in this degree. So, so definitely the the whole story of or the whole life part can be summarized with these four words parting sadness losses and expenses and but as i said since the sun is in a good dignity um, this actually enriched the life it gave good results (coughs) and yes so this is a so the first analysis of the first house Rahu shows an uncommon life and then it is uh, confirmed also by the sun being in a place where there is always no steady place to stay it's always a moving on uh, meeting people again uh, par- uh, have to give up the relationship find new new places new opportunities so this is seen from the sun and from the from also from the Rahu and <coughs> um, not now the next thing I want to s- say is talk about is the Venus since Venus um, is a very important planet for this for this native due to two reasons it is uh, the Lord of the Titi Shashti Titi she's born on the Krishna Shashti the waning moon the sixth day of the waning room moon Shashti is the sixth day and that Shashti Titi is ruled by Venus and secondly 
the karana that is uh, if you the titis you can uh, divide in two and there are karanas for that so the karana f in her case is um, here vanicha vanicha karana and the vanicha karana this is again also from my teacher uh, Brigu astrology teacher is also ruled by Shukra by the Venus so Venus the Karana gives us also as the word says Karana is a um, Sanskrit word means the reason Sarva Karana Karanam that is the the cause of all causes that is God is the Kara Sarva Karana Karanam so Karana means the cause or the reason why so this is the reason of birth is expressed by this karana the de the devi for it is lakshmi and what i would mostly highlight here is that it is about enriching others lakshmi it's supposed to gain prosperity and wealth interchange provide others with everything necessary as well as achieve equilibrium as the reason for embodiment so it is about trading, commerce, uh, trading in the sense also interchanging with other people. Venus is anyway the, peop the, the planet of relationship and having win-win deals, having good relationships that enriches both of the partners. And so the, the reason of bird is definitely to enrich some, to give something to others, to enrich help, to help others, provide others with everything necessary. So, so that, that, that meaning is is important for this chart because it's the karana of the reason of birth so <clears throat> and secondly it is the titi lord um, my tit excuse me uh, the titi lord that is and the the deity that is uh, about the shashi is kartikeya kartikeya that is the heavenly or the the general or the fighter of the of the demigods the war the god of war if you want like that if you want to have it greek way it's the god of war so therefore it is in the spiritual sense it is more about um, controlling your senses um, like some ascetic type of things but also in a, in terms of interaction and so is rather being confrontational so if something is not uh, the way it should be, this person will be definitely ready to voice it, and to raise the voice. And uh, secondly, we have to see the Karana cannot be, uh, according to Brigu, the Karana cannot be uh, analyzed alone. It has to be together with the months. So the months is Shravana months. The Shravana months is ruled by Indra. Ashwini uh, here, Shravana must be here. Shravana man's here, Navamas. So Indra is the king of heaven. So, so therefore the and the Titi and the Mas Masa, the the the, the moon face, and the months they give I uh, information about the attachment or the I would say the final in the intention of the person so this is something that is uh, like prevailing the whole chart that, that this intention is there and that is coming into the chart through Venus and the intention is to take control to manage things take control not in a bad way but to manage things to be capable of pulling something off and managing a, pe a group of people and managing something in the same time also confronting if something is not in order i go and confront so these two main characteristics are very st are strong because it is is the titi no mm -hmm. titi is part of the panjanga the five limbs of time and the five limbs of time are very important otherwise they would not be called the five limbs of time so <coughs> So we have now Venus who holds the reason of birth which is interchanging with people and, and giving, giving something back, giving something out 
and also has uh, the that managing capability and confronting a capability. So now let's see where Venus is placed in terms of the Bhavapadas. So Venus um, is in 19 degrees. So that is donation and charity. And we have to combine it with the placement from the Lagna, which is secret enemies and encounters. So donations and charities. So the 12th house is the house of loss, of giving things away. But not always in a bad sense. In this sense, it's about giving away something in charity, giving a donation, enriching others out of selfless love, you can say. It's also the 12th house is, is a moksha house, is about of giving up the self, no? It's a house of giving up the self. So here, the Venus is very, has a very selfless touch to it. So the Venus is capable of managing things, it's capable of confronting bad things. So if there is like, um, some adverse situation, something, she is ready to fight for it. But the reason she's doing it, she wants to enrich people. So donation and charity is there. And this karana of, of Lakshmi Devi, of, of uh, interchanging and providing others. So <clears throat> Venus is very important. And but what we, as we said in the intro, is the way of the, the way the life was led was not in harmony with the intention of the life and the reason of, of or yeah, the reason of life was because Sun and Venus they're enemies. If we can see here my table, this is the Sun considers Venus as an enemy, and Venus considers the Sun as an enemy. So they're mutual enemies. So the, sun, the, the Venus suffers twice because it's in a Venus house, in a sun house. It's not an environment where the Venus feels happy. Plus, it's also joined by the sun. And the sun agitates the Venus. So what I suggest, what this leaves the person with is that the person was definitely enriched by uh, her experience of moving a lot and having many experiences, having many relationships, um, seeing the world from many angles. But in the same time, um, that lifestyle didn't allow her to do what she ha really wants to do from the core of her heart. And therefore some regret is there in the, in the like, Oh, would I have had a more stable place to stay? Would I have had uh, maybe a strong family where which in which I can would have been able to act? So I would have been able to create something to give to people. So I believe that 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 feeling of uh, unsatisfaction is there. That the intention is there to enrich people. But since people are coming so so fast and going so fast and also pl moving, the environment moves, uh, changes so often because it, there's always this, this connotation of the life part, which is about parting and sadness, losses and expenses. Always have to move, always have to say goodbye. So there is no uh, place for this very nice intention to to um, oppose enemies, bad, bad elements, to en give enrichment to others. So there was no, uh, s the, the life part didn't support the reason of life. Yeah. <coughs> so I believe that is like the most, the biggest regret in this person's life. Yeah. Let's have a look at the uh, Navamsa, because in Navamsa, Venus is uh, very important. It's the most important planet. And let's have a look at the D60, uh, 16. That is, uh, again, Venus is important. And 
<coughs> this D16 also I like to look at it because it shows uh, our happiness we, we derive from all the things we have and the Navamsa is about the Dharma our uh, life uh, uh, the the ashram we choose I mean the, the the circumstance of life we choose to be in or let's say it spiritually um, <clears throat> so what happens to Venus here so Venus we can see Navamsa already in debilitation and also joined by an enemy so that shows that um, also the, the the way of life or let's say I mean the relationship or the not relationship whatever it might it might be in a marriage it might be in a relationship or also may, maybe not in a relationship often is not conducive to fulfill the significations of venus venus is not somehow or other the karma of this person is such that she could not lead her life in a way that lets her realize her venus in the same time also um, the ashram she was in ashram means like there are four ashrams according to Vedic understanding that is uh, Brahmacharya ashram that is the celibacy before marriage in the student life then Grihastha ashram where you enter a fixed relationship and have children and uh, maintain your household grow give uh, yeah and then Vanaprast ashram that is after the household duties are completed we move away we are away from the obligations of the world and going towards spirituality and then the sannyas ashram is where somebody completely surrenders to to the spiritual path to god and no doesn't keep any ties to anything in the world at least in, not outwardly outwardly he's still active in the world but in, inwardly really renounces everything and just develops attachment to his spirit to to god <laughs> to spirituality means god yeah all right so these are the four ashrams so the, the navamsa says about this ashram says about this dharma so Ni venus is also the nine lord it's uh, the one who holds the dharma and he is kind of sof sophisticated actually the word is uh, agitated but i would like to say he's like sophisticated the nine lord cannot really come out and then we can also see that here in Avamsa the Venus is uh, not uh, n not in a good shape is in debilitation doesn't has any power in the same time um, moon is there so most probably these relationships didn't work out well and the most reason is that moon the relationship became too selfish more about her than the relationship itself because when moon enters into venus that we can see from the aspect on venus venus is aspected by the moon quite strongly and also we can see navamsa the moon is there so most probably relationship couldn't work out so well because she could not feel the nourishment that she actually was looking for basically and also mars 12th house having a very strong aspect to the seventh house that is mangal dosha that is also difficult for relationships it can be neutralized if the partner is is a uh, fitting uh, otherwise it's also quite difficult and uh, <coughs> so regarding really yeah so so we can see that in the navamsa the venus cannot shine and grow in this Satsdhyamsa Venus is better Venus is in a friend's house Mercury uh, Venus is considering Mercury a friend yes Venus is considering Mercury a friend and Rahu and Ketu are there which uh, kind of alienates the Venus a bit but nevertheless Venus is uh, quite okay here yeah anyway uh, <coughs> so one more thing I wanted to say is so 
her intention is actually more about enriching other people's life and since this could not happen because of the way of life um, there is a kind of resentment to, to, to the past and enriching people is also a lot about interaction with people and we can see that the seventh cusp or the seventh bhava point this is the nine degree Pisces is uh, aspected by so many planets. The only planet who has no aspect to it is Moon, and all the aspects are strong, like above 50%, above significantly. Only Mercury 58, but otherwise Mars 100, 74% of the Sun, 73, the Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. All have a strong aspect to the seven cusp. So this seven, so. This person must have had so many relationships. I mean, not I mean not love relationships. This I don't. This I don't want to say. But so many people's coming and going in in within her life, and because since all the planets but the moon is etch, is uh, activating the seventh house through the aspect, that means in all these antardashas, only the moon antardasha relationships happen and go happen and go happen and go happen and go so that is a uh, maybe another yeah so so in conclusion <coughs> and no one more thing i want to say there is though though one thing is there and that is saturn is really very helpful saturn is aspecting venus by good amount eight is it Six, 70 percent that is quite substantial since others are not strong only moon by 50 percent but the saturn aspect is stronger so therefore um despite the venus is quite sophisticated um so i mean doesn't get air to breathe and and excel and do its job but still Saturn is there and, and expecting and Saturn is exactly the planet that helps us to tolerate the harshness of life. If we have the blessings of Saturn, life might be so hard, but we just don't mind. And we just realize oh, life is like this. It's all right. Like a, a person that has a debilitated Saturn. If you hear them talk about what they went through, you will always think, oh my God, they had such a, such an exciting life or such a, they went through such a hard period and they were suffering so intensely. But actually, if you see, it is not such a big deal. But because they don't have a, a strong Saturn, for them, everything becomes so intense and so hard. Whereas someone who has a strong Saturn, he will not brag, oh, this happened to me. He will just tolerate and just l live his life and just carry on and will not make a big deal out of his sufferings or his, de his, his things. So the Saturn has this quality that, and if, especially when Saturn aspects Venus, it gives the Venus this quality that, all right, you know, life is hard, but just l let's be happy with that. And we just know that, so let's be happy with what we have. And let's be satisfied with what we have. And life is like this. There is always a shortage. There is always lack of things. But never mind, life is like this. Let us be happy anyway. So this is happening here. And that is, since also Saturn is um, <coughs> the only planet besides the shadow planets in the Kendras, in the place where... Um, which are activities are shown. I mean, the candles they're showing activities shows that <coughs> that after all, though dissatisfaction is there, but this can be still uh, tolerated. Means if now Saturn would be in a bad shape or uh, would have no power, would be in debilitation, then definitely this issue of of Venus being agitated by Sun and starved by by the sun also because in in sun house and she cannot live her fulfillment cannot enrich the people sh like she would like to enrich then this would be a real 
become a psychological problem or really a big issue and a real reason to be a real sadness and the point of depression. But since Saturn is there and helping out, and since Saturn is rather strong, I would say, um, <clears throat> she, she can just still on, go on and just see, okay, things are not ideal in my life. Okay, I lived like this. But anyway, okay, I could gain. I had a good life. I, I, I had so many experiences. I, I met so many people. But okay, I could not and give as much as I would have liked to give to others. But anyway, like that. So I believe this feeling is there and that is really nice. So all glories to Saturn. Shani Maharaj Ki Jai, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so now, what is the su suggestion? How to resolve this problem here? So um, I would like to conclude this with uh, and also give a suggestion how this can be resolved uh, by a shloka of the Bhagavad Gita, and that is in from the third chapter, forty second chapter. 42nd and actually also 43rd. So here is saying that Indriyani parang yahur indra indriye bhaya parang manaha manastu para buddhir yo buddhe paratastu saha. The working senses are superior to the matter. So Indriyani, the working senses, para parang yahur, er param. Uh, um, above the matter. Ahura, I mean, believes that. It's superior, yeah. It's just superior. The Indias are superior than the matter. Uh, what is the last verse? Okay. And then, the Manaha is higher than the Indriya. The, the mind is above the senses. Then the intelligence, again, is above the mind. And, above the m intelligence, there is the soul. So the working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind and the soul is even higher than the intelligence. So this gives us a really beautiful road map, so to say, from our existence. <laughs> so we are, we are eternal soul, we are an eternal Atma that is um, so to say, trapped in a material body that is made out of gross elements, the senses, and the subtle elements, the mind and the intelligence. And this verse is giving us uh, information that the soul, the source of our consciousness, our core, the core of our being, is above our psychology, mind and intelligence, and is about about the gross body, the senses. The gross body is the su the sum the sum of all the senses. So <coughs> um, the mind that is uh, the function of the mind, according to the Vedas, is um, accepting and rejecting. And the function of the intelligence is to uh, have deliberation, the deliberation power. So the mind is saying, oh, I like this. But then the intelligence comes, okay, you like it, but if you take it, this, this will happen. So then you might not take the cake. cake. So the, 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 the mind, she likes cake. And he says, oh yeah, cake is nice. But then the intelligence comes, hey, but there is this much calories inside. Um, better don't take it. So therefore the intelligence is above the mind. And <coughs> the mind is above the senses. So let's say the senses um, yeah the senses they they are the, they are ruled by the mind no so I, if i want to do something first i have the idea comes to the mind and then i do something so therefore the senses they're above the mind and um So what he's saying here is that the soul, the consciousness, is even above, above, above these things that are happening. So the 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 chart, 
this is giving us um, information about uh, where we are sorry is giving us information about the working senses the, the mind and the intelligence these three things they are in they are influenced by by the material atmosphere because they're material they're from material energy and this is what you see here uh, this this is how for this particular person the mind and the senses they work out but this this chart this does not describe the soul because the soul is aprakrita is uh, is uh, above the material influence so <coughs> That means if we are doing spiritual practice and we are strengthening the, the soul and we are strengthening our consciousness, the soul consciousness and removing our identification from to the mind and intelligence, then we the soul can take can, can take over. So what I want to say is that um, by the way that the, the, the the connection between the soul and the, and the body, that is the ahankar, the false ego. So this is the, the most subtle material element and that is covering the soul's eternal knowledge and blissfulness and consciousness and makes the soul believe that I am the body. But that is ignorance and that is wrong identification. So spiritual practice means that we are strengthening the soul consciousness and we are reducing our false ego. And wrong, and there is a true ego. I am soul, and the soul has a relationship also with the other, with the supreme soul and other souls. But <coughs> um, so there is a true ego, and to strengthen the true ego means we are giving up on the on the on the on the false ego. And the false ego is that that thing that makes us identify with our body and our mind and our intelligence and our body and mind and intelligence they are expressed here this is the charts I mean you can see here is the whole roadmap of what is our intelligence and our body and we are getting this due to our past karma so the, what the, li the way we lived our life in, in past life designed this and this is and now we have to now we are as a soul incarnated in this vehicle and we have to um, deal with this type of mind this type of intelligence this type of senses this type of body constitution this type of ideas and ideologies so these are all the ideas and ideologies and the cons bodily constitutions and the desires which are all saved within the subtle mind and subtle body and the gross body that is all expressed within the chart but the chart cannot uh, tell about the soul because the soul is above all of these things so why I'm saying this is like um, by, by nature we are forced to follow the indications of our chart so this is the nature that forces us like a dog he is forced to eat stool. Uh, maybe you have ever seen a dog who is just walking in the, in the street and just sniffling <laughs> and like that. And when you see his eyes, you see like what I see there sometimes is like, actually, I don't want to do that, but my nose is just dragging me, you know, like actually, I, I, yeah. So, 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 so this, this soul incarnated in the dog body lived his, li her, his life in a past life in such a way that in this life it is forced to be a dog and the, the forces of material nature and the laws of material nature are so stringent that you are just forced although you are an eternal living being full of knowledge and full of, of bliss <coughs> you're forced to go to the street and drink the dirty water and leak on, on stool you're just forced by nature and in human life, the consciousness is much more free. But still, there are forces. We are forced by nature. So the nature, due to her karma, due to the, the body that is designed for her 
be because of the la past deeds, forcing her to live the life in such a way, and also giving her that 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 the actually desire to want to enrich others and want to exchange with others and help others, but in the same time not having the um, um, just the circumstances of life do not allow it, do not support it, and that is yeah. So what I'm s what I want to say is that how how to resolve it. So now the circumstances of life and the part of life do not support the intention and the reason of birth. Do not support that. Therefore, dissatisfaction is there. So if the person will cultivate spiritual life and spiritual consciousness, then the person will become more aloof from the influences of the material nature, of the laws, and can say no. So then the sun will come and say, hey, let's go and move on, let's do this and that. Then the, if the consciousness is stringent by spiritual practice, can just say, hey, no, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to listen to Venus which says me, I should stay here, I should learn something or do something where I can reach others. And then I will feel fulfilled. So, so I, as we advance in our spiritual consciousness, in our spiritual practice, we will be more able to say no to the uh, influences of the planets. Yeah. So this is what I say, what I wanted to say. And this is what my suggested remedy is. And thank you so much for listening. I hope it made some sense. <laughs> and I hope my assessment was actually correct. So please uh, let me know it in the comments. And I wish you a very, very wonderful day. Hare Krishna. Vivato Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Uroho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka